Hi, my name is Natalie Calvert, and this is Lab 5, Magnetic Breaking with Faraday. Introduction. For the purpose of this lab, we had to collect data and observations through an experiment and coding to apply Faraday's law. Some fundamentals were Faraday's law, Biose of Art law, which we used in Lab 3, Newton's laws, Ohm's laws, and magnetic force for a loop. This is my results that I found, and all of these laws are connected in some way or another that we showed through code. For a model, the bar magnet was used to model a magnetic dipole, while the aluminum foil was a tube through which it fell through. We assumed air resistance was negligible, and gravity and the magnetic force are the only two forces that are acting on the bar magnet. For the experiment, here are a list of materials needed, and for the system, the bar magnet and the aluminum foil were the only parts, and the surroundings was everything else. For the procedure, we first used our magnetometer app to find the north pole of our bar magnet. We then set up our phone to record a video of us dropping the bar magnet, bar magnet through the roll of foil. We did this five times and recorded the amount of time it took for the magnet to fall through the aluminum foil. For my experiment, here is a list of all the measurements taken from the roll of aluminum foil that was used in the coding data. On the right, we see my five trial times of dropping the magnet through the aluminum foil, in which the average time came to be about 1.08 seconds. Checkpoint questions. Why can't we use a ferrous tube, for example, steel pipe? This pipe would have iron in it, which has a magnetic properties. It could have produced a magnetic field that would have skewed our data. 2. What happens to the magnet? How does this compare to a magnet falling in free, free space without a tube? The magnet falls slower through the tube than in free space because there is an upward magnetic force on the magnet caused by the induced current in the tube. Here is the first part of our tube through experiment. First we have our constant, then we add in our data measurements for the tube in step 1. The rest of step 1 was given to us and was used to create the tube of foil. To create the bar magnet on the bottom left, we added our own weight for the magnet in the magnetic dipole moment from lab 3. Now going to the top right, this code was given to create the bar magnet. We then used our dipole moment function from lab 3 in step 2 and created a function to calculate the magnetic flux through each ring due to the magnet in step 3. This formula was given in pre-lecture videos. In the last part of the code, a simulation was run. This created a visual visualization of the magnet falling through the loop. We added in our own calculation for the force of gravity on the magnet, then calculated the current in the ring from the magnetic flux function and the resistance. We then created a series of steps to calculate the magnitude of the force on the ring from various equations shown in the pre-lecture videos. Finally, we calculated the magnet's velocity position for Newton's second law equations and using data from the code. A plot of velocity versus time was created for the magnet as it fell. Here are results from our coding. On the left is a velocity versus time graph that shows the falling of the magnet through the tube, and our time was 0 0.93 seconds in the tube. And on the right shows a visualization of the magnet in the tube, and the red is the north, which is going down. Interpreting the simulation. The intensity of coloring of the tube indicates the magnitude of current flowing through each ring. Red and blue indicate current flowing in opposite directions. Which color cor corresponds to clockwise current and which counterclockwise? How can you know? The blue color corresponds to the clockwise direction, and the, while the red color is the counterclockwise direction. This is known from Lenz's law and the right-hand rule. What happens to the dynamics of the system when you flip the magnet around? The direction of the current would flip the other way due to the magnetic field of the magnet pointing in the opposite direction. How does the total time in the tube of the real world system compare to that of your computational system? How might the computational system be made more accurate? Our times are very close together for this experiment. The computational data could have more rings of the system, which would create an even more accurate result. The experimental mu value could have also been found by using a more accurate measurement, leading to a better overall result. What does the shape of the velocity versus time plot tell you about the forces acting on the bar magnet? This shape tells me that the gravitational force and the magnetic force on the magnet are not balanced because the graph goes down and then back up, but it begins to level out after a small amount of time and they reach an equilibrium where the velocity is constant. But then the velocity is not constant again when the magnet reaches the bottom of the tube where the gravitational force is stronger than the magnetic force. For comparison, our computer values for the time it took for the magnet to fall was very close in value to the ones that we calculated by hand. Some sources of error could have been human error involving the time being read wrong when the magnet fell and having a possible incorrect mu value or equation from the previous lab 3. Discussion. What if the resistivity of the conductor were reduced as close as possible to zero, how would the dynamics of the falling magnet change? If this were true, the induced current in the loops would be much greater than before and would create a much greater force on the magnet as well. It could even possibly counteract the gravitational force altogether. What if holes or slots were cut into the tube? How would this affect the ring current in your model? If this situation were true, then the induced current in the loops would probably be less because the holes in the tube would disrupt the flow of current. The magnet would also probably fall through the tube quicker from the induced current being reduced. 
conclusion, this lab helped us gain a better understanding of Faraday's law and how it can be interpreted in real life. The computational data really helped us visualize what was occurring within this tube in this special circumstance. This lab allowed us to connect several topics and laws and discussed in class throughout the year, and we were able to put them all together. Thank you.